let's talk about Serbia. And we promised you last night we were going to talk about this and more developments overnight about this. But stop stop us if you've heard this one before, right, which is the story where NATO sticks its neck into a country's affairs and ends up ruining, uh, running it right into the ground, right? Um, enter Serbia, which remains, uh, which which you'll remember the NATO bombings, they all remember it very, very well, the NATO bombings of their country, you know, mm -hmm. in, the, in the 1990s, all too well. Um, and then, of course, Kosovo declared independence from Serbia in 2008. Well, there's a whole new mess unfolding before us. I mean, they're fighting right now over license plates and government IDs. So that will put this into perspective. It sounds trivial, but it really is not if you live in that region. So Kosovo declared independence in 2008, but Serbia does not recognize them as an independent nation. With the help of NATO, they did this. So yes. This isn't like, hey, Kosovo just one day decided. No, this was NATO's force forcing them to do this right yeah well that's not the way nato puts it they call them peacekeepers <laughs> right of right course. right okay so many serbian people living in the region also do not recognize that they live in the independent nation of kosovo serbia calls this region the autonomous province of kosovo and metohija uh so now there is there are protests because the government in Kosovo wants to require anyone crossing the border to switch out their license plate from a Serbian license plate to a Kosovo license plate and carry an ID, basically a, a sort of duplicate ID saying that they belong in Kosovo. You can be Serbian and get this ID, right? So many people do not support this decision and they don't want it, specifically ethnic Serbians living in this region. When this was announced last September, there were blockades uh, from truckers and people who were blocking border crossings, but, NATO, but with the help of NATO peacekeepers, the blockades were taken down and they sort of st stood down uh, until this law was supposed to take, in, take place, which was yesterday, mm -hmm. August 1st. So we have video of some military planes flying over these blockades last September. So we'll play this for you. So you see, it was a fairly peaceful protest. Um, but there was a strong military reaction to it. So now uh, the law was supposed to go into effect August 1st and the blockades were set back up and uh, it created much conflict in the region. Go ahead. Steve Young says, my brother went there as a peacekeeper. Some of the photos that he showed me were horrific. They really hate each other. Well, we were just in Serbia and you could still see, I mean, many of the bombed out buildings, which, in, you know, and some, you know, some are left there intentionally, obviously, to remind. Um, and we spoke to a number of uh, citizens and, 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 you know, government employees and others who said, you know, it was horrific, right? The, the bombings that unfolded, taking our children to the basement as NATO planes overhead and bombing our buildings. And Russia over the past 24 hours saying, knock it off. Russian uh, Russian foreign ministry coming out saying, um, knock off this provocation to the United States and to NATO. So Serbia has the support of Russia. Again, when people think- Russia does not recognize pieces. Kosovo. There are very few nations that, right. you know, go ahead, sorry. No, no, so that my, my point is that Russia has, they have their support. They have, they recently, of course, signed a, a gas agreement with- uh, Serbia did, with, yes. With Russia to make sure that its citizens are taken care of through the rest of the winter, right? And make sure that, you know, they're not sticking their necks in sanctions as well. But go on, continue, because you... Right, the Serbian economy is strong, um, and they have kind of chosen their sides to ally further with Russia than with Europe and the United States in the war over Ukraine. Uh, they are not getting involved in that. But when the German Prime Minister Olaf Scholz visited Serbia earlier this year, he did sort of ask, well, you know, there's this Kosovo thing that is very much like the territorial conflict in Ukraine. And the president of Serbia said, it's none of your business. That's for us to, you know, we don't really welcome your input on this. Now, the law has been, the implementation of this license plate law has been pushed out a month to September 1st. The Prime Minister of Kosovo, Albin Kurti, uh, posted this. Can we put his tweet up? And I will... Oh, I was going to read that, but I don't know if I'm going to... Even with my glasses. 
You want uh, me to read it? I'll read it. The government of the Republic of Kosovo forcefully conde condemns the obstruction of roads in the north of Kosovo and the firing of weapons by armed persons there today. This has everything to do with a tendency to destabilize Kosovo and to threaten the peace and security of our citizens and our country. Multiple aggressive acts were per uh, perpetrated this afternoon and evening, instigated and planned by Belgrade authorities. And then it so goes on. So that is very inflammatory speech. He's saying that Serbia actually is instigating these blockades. Um, and so now NATO is helping to remove these blockades. And we'll see if this goes any smoother when uh, the law goes into effect in less than 30 calendar days. So, you know, it, it's interesting because the United States is recognizing these conflicts and NATO powers are going in and, and flexing their muscles and saying, we support these sovereign nations, right? And then what we've seen play out now in these three regions now, um, Ukraine, Taiwan, right? And now Serbia is that we sort of send some, um, you know, popular but not presidential person over to show up. In, so, you know, who? Like Ted Cruz. This is the template, right? Right. So then Ted Cruz or I don't know who would be better for this and say we support independent Kosovo. And then we have the same thing like we it's just a rinse and repeat. Some really good comments in the chat that I want to kind of call attention to and a great point by uh, Rick in the chat says, you know, remember, Kosovo is Serbian ancestral land. Taiwan was never really part of China. Right. So an important an, an important distinction sure. there. Um, uh, also comments about Serbia uh, as uh, sending pe people had sent peacekeepers as friends, family members to this area. They never saw them again after they went, disappeared, gone. Um, that NATO uh, and others used depleted uranium mm -hmm. also uh, in Belgrade. Um, and so really, really awful. And so again, this, this idea that NATO is once again blockade, you saw them even blockading roads overnight. We featured that in the yeah. newsletter, you know, blockading roads, getting involved how many places does nato want to create a proxy war and, and sort of acting to? as if well it's just fair right because kosovo citizens who travel into serbia and cross the border the other way are required to change the license plates and the ids and so nato is treating it as if it's a simple act of just like have dual citizenship it's kind of fun right um and it's just not that easy it's so much more nuanced and emotional for the people who live in this region right yeah, it is. Absolutely. And so NATO says they're prepared to step in and remove these blockades. Um, you know, as you pointed out in the newsletter so far, Nancy Pelosi has stayed out of this one. Maybe she'll fly there next. Maybe we'll track her Maybe. flight and see if she shows up <laughs> she there goes, tomorrow, if she's got some. Um, yeah, yeah, where's she want to go next? Like, OK, she's in Taiwan now. She'll she'll fly to uh, she'll fly to Serbia next. And it's a beautiful country and the economy is doing really, really well. And this is the thing in Serbia, right? So you see as we're driving through downtown Belgrade and you're on your way to the airport or in surrounding neighborhoods, you're seeing a lot of construction. You're seeing businesses opening. You're seeing thriving nightlife. Um, you're seeing a, a Serbia that does not want to be involved in conflict, does not want to be involved in war, uh, wants to stay out of it. You see a president of Serbia um, who is making making sure that the people of Serbia are taken care of. Yes. Um, and signing gas agreements with Russia to make sure that they are staying away from sanctions and making sure that gas continues to flow during a very cold winter in Serbia um, would be refreshing, actually, to to have presidents that actually give a shit about their own people and are sort of and standing strong with their own people uh, instead of what we've got in the United States right now and other Western leaders, you know. 